it's it's uh, it was written in response to to our clip actually about the weird dislike of Prince Harry and his wife and, and where it comes from. And a lot of people are unhappy with the observation that her ethnicity is one of the most obvious reasons to distinguish between her and other female members of the royal family. But um, so the Twitter account is called Royal Suitor. And as with so much online, I don't know what's um, what's real and what's not. But the byline on this is 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 R.S. Locke. Pay attention. This is really important. It's only a three minute read and and i'll share it with you now because i felt pennies dropping as as never before when i read this so we'll start at the top again i might do my jack and ori voice for this all right i won't imagine a society founded on a class structure with the brackets white close brackets and the brackets are important British royal family at the top as determined by birth and by blood, right? Don't have to imagine it. That's what we've got. It's not a matter of opinion. That's a matter of historical fact. A biracial woman enters the top of the pyramid by marriage, negating both the birth and blood requirements society had previously been told were preconditions. Because she lacks those prerequisites, she's considered unworthy. Because she's proud of her own heritage and regards herself as equal to others at the top of the pyramid, she's considered ungrateful. The town criers called out from the lower tiers of the pyramid, I've never met her, but I look at her and I think, I don't think I'd like you in real life, said one. We Brits prefer true royalty to fashion royalty, proclaimed another. These are Direct quotes from prominent columnists and commentators. We shouts of she just doesn't speak our language came whistling on the wind. But at the top of the pyramid, the cries were met with silence. So she's under attack in some fairly horrible ways. And they expected perhaps to get some support and protection from the boss or even the brother. Were they too far away from it? Were they too disconcerted to know what to reply? Or did they use the cacophony from below to muffle the echo of their own whispers as they murmured the same things? The loudest gossip monger was impossible to ignore as he offishly admonished her to go back to America. Um, There was a brooch, I think, worn by one of the royals at an early meeting with the Duchess of Sussex, which I should double-check the facts before before I um, describe it. But, but have a look yourself. After years of being told that she was unworthy and ungrateful, the newlywed took the crier's advice and returned from whence she came. Despite one tattler's audacious cautions not to force her husband to, and she quotes again, choose between you and us, he did in fact choose his wife just as he did the day he married her, much to their chagrin. Ironically, though society spurned her placement at the top of the pyramid, when she leaves with her husband, for some, it calls into question whether the pyramid's peak is still something to aspire to. God, this is good. Whether those at the top are truly elite. Whether blood and birth really are prerequisites. Their departure is considered a rejection of the pyramid as a construct, thus a rejection of the society itself. For others, it was a necessary repudiation and confirmed that just as they suspected, she was N-O-C-D, which translates as not our class, dear. And remember, the Duchess of Cambridge took an awful lot of jip for A, not being an aristocrat, and B, having a mother who had once worked as an air hostess. But she owed the line and fitted in. Final paragraph. Still, that wasn't enough. For society to maintain order, she must be reclassified and her elite status conferred by marriage removed. But the society is trapped in a conundrum. Her husband and their children are at the top of the pyramid by birth 
and by blood. Now, I'd remind you, this was written before today's announcement about patronages and honorary military appointments being removed from the Duke and Duchess. Her husband and their children are at the top of the pyramid by birth and by blood, removing titles, military honours and patronages won't remove her from the top of the pyramid. The only thing that will reclassify her is to remove her from her husband. And the society has been working diligently, though unsuccessfully, to that end since the day they learned that Harry and Meghan were a couple. You know, I, I, I don't even know the real identity of the person that wrote that, but it seems to me to be the most insightful, informed and plausible explanation of matters royal that I have ever read in my life. And while you won't be surprised to learn that I don't have a spare room full of royal biographies or, or, or royal um, historiographies, histories, I, I do read the papers every day and, and I try for obvious reasons, to read stuff that I don't like and papers that I don't agree with. And I have never read anything even half as good as that. Partly because it makes absolutely perfect sense. Partly because it retrospectively explains so many things that I have been baffled and confused by. Uh, indeed, it was inspired, that, 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 that little piece, by the phone-in we did on Monday, asking what on earth is it that she's supposed to have done wrong? And partly because it's so prescient. Remember, this was written on Monday. Today is Friday. don't think that qualifies as a scoop either while we're here. But that was written on Monday. Today is Friday. It has literally just been announced that the Duke and Duchess of Sussex are to lose their honorary military appointments and royal patronages. And this was written five days ago. Removing titles, military honours and patronages won't remove her from the top of the pyramid. The only thing that will reclassify her is to remove her from her husband and the society.